Hey, a little heads up before you watch this week's teaching. We recorded in front of a live crowd and the front on shot didn't turn out so well. So you're only gonna see this side of my face. However, you're gonna be able to hear pretty well. And I hope this message means a lot to you. Let's go ahead and watch. I want to welcome those joining us online today. It's so good to have you with us, those of you in the room as well. Um, so there's this thread on social media um, that, I've, that I've noticed. It's been around for a few years, but I've noticed it lately especially where it says, tell me your job without telling me what your job is. Have you, have you guys seen this kind of thing before or whatever? And, and you kind of come up with these descriptions. So one of them might be, for instance, I connect metal to another metal using electricity and or fire. You know, maybe a welder would, uh, might be or whatever. Um, uh, there's another one that says, I take people's money for the small chance of more money. That could be a whole bunch of different things, right? Um, I, I watch buildings and say it's good or no good. You know, I can imagine building inspector of some sort. I show young and dumb people where to find what old and smart people said. A librarian, perhaps, maybe. Um, <laughs> I'm a professional kidnapper. That could be a teacher, perhaps. Um, I look at drawings and tell people what's on them. Could be a radiologist, could be a, an art museum person, whatever. Um, after kids tell me where it hurts, I push on the part where it hurts while asking if it hurts. Um, I help rich people spend their money by pulling weeds. That might be one. Um, I, I provide caffeine to tired adults while they scream at me. If you, the number of professions that might apply to, right? Um, I take bones that are arranged in a way that I uh, find not pleasing, and then I line them up the way I like. Then I screw in some metal. <laughs> um, okay. I constantly try to rearrange the 26 letters of the alphabet in new and exciting ways. Um, uh, I get paid to be someone else. Wouldn't that be an awesome thing to think about, actor? I get paid to be somebody else. Um, I bust through your front door and I spray all your things down with water and you usually thank me afterward. <laughs> okay, um, firefighter. Okay, so, so I think about like with my job and I mean, there's so many different ones and I'm not creative enough to think of it, but I, I think with my job, it's to rem remind people of what they keep forgetting. Um, some of you might say my job is to um, tell you to stop doing things that you like to do, <laughs> and then you give me money for it. <laughs> but anyway, so, sorry. Um, okay, so today, this is a message um, that I've had to get up, give on a number of occasions. This is kind of one of those reminding kind of messages, and, and so many of the churches, um, as you look through the scripture, you know, they're written to churches. So many of, of the letters that were written to these churches were about reminding them of, as well of this, of this thing that I'm going to tackle today. Today, I'm just going to tackle this, this question, what's the church? What's the church? Okay, now I want to give you the gist of this. I literally, I I asked my wife this in all seriousness this week. I said, is it okay if my sermon's like two minutes long? Will they forgive? So actually, I could actually give you my sermon in less than two minutes. So I'm going to give you the gist of my sermon here. Okay, are you ready for it? Now, the key scripture is 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Each one of you is a part of it. Okay, so here's how, here's the four main ideas here. Okay, this is the message right here. If you got this down, you could technically leave right now. You actually could. If somebody left right now, it would be awesome. Go for it. Because uh, this is literally what it is. Okay, so here's, here's, here's the first point. We are the body of Christ. Okay, we are the body of Christ. Second idea here. Each part has a role. Each part has a role. 
You can click it. It's OK. You can click it. There you go. You got to know your role. And then the fourth thing is step up and do it. Step up and do it, OK? Um, so because there's this expectation that I talk for 15 minutes or more, um, I'm going to continue to go, OK? So um, uh, how would we define the church? Um, I already gave you all the things here, by the way. Literally, that's, that's literally what I'm going to talk about. But I'm just going to say it in longer ways and kind of draw it out a little bit, OK? So it's worth your drive here today, basically. Sorry. OK, sorry. Um, so how would you define the church? Um, in Ephesians chapter 1, Paul defines the church this way. He says, and God placed all things under his feet. He's talking about Jesus here, by the way. And it placed all things under his feet. And he appointed Jesus to be the head over everything for the church. Then he defines the church here. He says, the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. This is kind of cool. This is, he says, the church is the body. It's the fullness of Jesus who fills everything in every way. The thing is, who are we to be? We are to be, as the church, we are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. We so often say, well, I want to be more like Jesus, or I've got Jesus in my heart, and my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But, but Paul is kind of saying, hey, there's more to it than this. Um, he goes on in Ephesians chapter 4, and, and he says, so Christ, uh, go to verse 11, he says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers, he gave them to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then go down to verse 15. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect I mean, it's talking about we, the church here, the, pe the people, right, will we'll grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. Then he says, from him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and build its, builds itself up in love as each part does its work, okay? So um, being a Christian is not an isolated experience for us. There is a one another involved with being a Christian. You are part of something so much bigger. Now, that's super reassuring, especially when you have those moments, you know, like, like, like somebody shared this morning about, like, it's, it's tough, you know, it's struggle, you know, being at school. And, you know, to know that you're a part of something so much bigger is, is, is awesome. That's one of the greatest things about coming together on Sunday morning is that we know, like, hey, there's so many more people who are following Christ. This is a, I'm, I'm, I'm part of a bigger team. I'm, this isn't an isolated experience, this following Jesus thing. You see, we are the body of Christ. We are Jesus in this world. Now, the second thought is this, and you already know what it is, right? <laughs> As the body of Christ, each part has its role. It's just like a body. Uh, Paul in, in, in 1 Corinthians 12 says that just as a body, just as a human body, the one has many parts, but all, all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. Then he says, For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slaves or free. And we were given the one spirit to drink. And then he says, Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, this speaks to the diversity and unity that comes. Each part has its role. There's a diversity in the body of Christ. This is the beauty of the church. This is what makes the church such a wonderful thing. You think about all the different backgrounds that com compose just even this, this local church, and not even to mention the global church, all the different backgrounds, all the different skill sets. All the different ages. Now, if you're a college student, take note of this. This is important. I, and I kind of neglected this. You know, when I was in college, I would go to churches that I was like, I wanted to go with churches that had other college students, that had a lot of them and stuff. And I totally missed out on the opportunities of, of some really awesome adults, older adults, um, that, were, that were in the church that I could have got to know. You know, and it wasn't, I was more so focused on my own needs and stuff. There's some diversity in the church that is so beautiful that all ages can gather together and, and be a part of the same thing. You know, um, social, economical, you know, diversity, the, um, education, political diversity, upbringings, we all have different life experiences to bring to it. But like a human body with diverse parts, 
we're one. There's unity, or there should be. This is this vision of unity, that we work together for the common goal, just like the human body does, works together for the common goal. So let's just imagine a scenario, and this was the first one that came to mind. Um, you want a donut. You, you're hungry for a donut, okay? So your body has to go get that donut, okay? Think about all the different body parts that have to be a part of eating and getting this donut, okay? Now, I, I'm not just mentioning even just a few. My brain has to want it, right? My, my eyes have to go look for it. My nose helps when you can smell it, right? Um, my legs have to get up and go get it. My feet have to, have to move just right. I have to use my hands. I don't have to, but it's more fun with your hands, right? Um, and my mouth consumes it. My teeth chomp down on it, my stomach digest. I mean, there's so many other. I mean, you could go through even more intricate what it involves with that. Now, if you, re if you remove any one of those body parts from the equation, like a donut with no mouth isn't really fun. Well, like, what do you do, right? Um, or no hand. It's more of a challenge, right? A donut with no taste buds? What's the point? That's sad. That's sad, huh? Um, See, diversity and unity is, is a defining quality of, of, of a body. We have different parts, but they all work together for the same goal. So there's this, this unity that comes. Another part of when, when you're a part of the body of Christ is there's this mutuality. Yeah. I don't even know how to say it. Mutuality. Mutuality. Mutual, mutuality? Is that really how it's pronounced? Okay. Mutuality. Whatever. This idea of that we depend on the other. Now, this is, this is so interesting, that we, that, that we depend on each other. Rick Warren defines this really well. He says, in real fellowship, people experience that word, mutuality. <laughs> mutuality is the art of giving and receiving. It's depending on each other. It says that the Bible says the way God designed our bodies is a model for understanding our lives together as a church, that every part is dependent on every other part. And he says mutuality, <laughs> I think that's the last time the word shows up here, by the way. Mutuality is the heart of fellowship, building reciprocal relationships. Now, this is important to recognize. Reciprocal, sharing responsibilities and helping each other. Paul said it this way, I want to help each other with the faith that we have. I want us to help each other with the faith we have. Your faith will help me. Now, this is the beauty of this, that your faith will help me. Some of us feel weaker in our faith. Your faith will help me, and my faith will help you. Um, from, from Romans 1, chapter, or chapter 1, verse 12. You know, there's this, this idea that we are working together. We are the body of Christ. And each part has its unique role, and it's diverse, but, it, but it's a common goal. And it's reciprocal. It's mutual. Now, here's the third part. Know your role. Now, your role in the body of Christ is not to sit there and consume and critique. Okay? Sorry. You know, Paul describes various spiritual gifts. You know, and, and a spiritual gift, we could define this way. And, and, and it's the, there's a whole bunch listed in, in the 1 Corinthians passage, chapter 11 and 12. It, the spiritual gift is a supernatural ability given to all Christians to do God's work on earth. Now, see, the spiritual gift isn't meant to receive personally so you can enjoy yourself. We are each given a spiritual gift that is to be a blessing to the church and ultimately to the world. That, that it enables us, and it's supernatural, and, it's, and it's, it's specifically designed for us in the specific time that we find ourselves in, that we can do God's work. Now, we all have parts to play on the team. Got to know what your role is. Got to know what your role is. That's all I'm going to say there, but I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this fourth point here. We need to step up and do it. Can I be honest? I've been honest all month, by the way. Um, I'm getting sick of being honest. Wait till, no, anyway. Can I be honest? And if you've been here the last few weeks, you know I've been a little blunt with things. We talked about giving last week, and I was pretty blunt with it. Can I be honest about how we're doing right now at this church thing? Um, 
I guess the best way to describe it is to show you something um, in a moment here. Um, do you guys know who Conor McGregor is? Some of you immediately, oh, I know who Conor McGregor is. You know, he's a mixed martial artist, um, a former UFC champion, boxer. Um, Forbes magazine just announced that he was the highest paid athlete. Like, just announced it. The highest paid athlete in the world, okay? Um, now, some of you may know Conor McGregor from his appearance this week at a Cubs game where he threw out the first pitch. Okay, so how are we doing as a church? Um, let's watch. I don't know if you saw that. There's Conor McGregor, okay? Let's, let's kind of look at it in slow motion a little bit. Where in the world is he throwing to? Um, now listen to the crowd here. This is kind of crazy. Listen to the laughter. Like, what in the world just happened there? Like, what in the world? Okay. Um, there's so many, so many things that you could apply with that, you know. Um, stick with UFC. <laughs> stick with MMA. You're not a pitcher, right? But this is the reality, and this is, to be honest, get back in the chair. Uh, to be honest, you can't see me over there on that camera. Okay, to be honest, sometimes I feel this way in, in the church. Sometimes I feel this, this sense of we need to be about raising up this next generation of leaders. Um, and it's one of our strategic priorities. But to be honest, I keep saying to be honest because... I'm using that because this is awkward to say, and so that's my filler word to fill in what I'm going to say next. To be honest, sometimes I feel like I'm Conor McGregor trying to do it when there's somebody who could pitch way better than me in some areas, especially with kids, especially with teens. And to be honest, I keep saying that because this is awkward. We need to step up. We say that, that raising up next generation leaders now is important to us, but how many times do I have to ask for somebody to fill in once a month in a ministry with kids? I'm exhausted. And, and, and I even told the board, I said, what if I just didn't show up next week and I helped in that class that we need somebody to teach? Because, like, it needs done. But the reality is I would look a lot like Conor McGregor throwing that pitch because there's somebody who could do it perfectly and designed specifically for that. And I don't believe that that there are to be gaps in those areas of priorities in our church. <laughs> we are called to raise up children to, to, to walk out this faith, this next generation. And it's been so awesome to see with the teen ministry. We have a completely filled ministry. There's like 40 students coming every week. Um, we have like eight adults regularly helping. Like we are, we're fully staffed in that area. It's so awesome to see. Um, and part of that why we have such a successful teen ministry, a lot coming, is because we invested a lot in our children's ministry. Um, and we're at the point now where we have three people helping and nobody else wants to. And it's kind of sickening. Now, I'm not saying everybody needs to be a children's worker, okay? So just get me straight here. I can, I can name a whole bunch of other areas that, that we've been asking for things. You know, we even asked for donations for, for food stuff, and, and I had to put a sign-up sheet out for three weeks and then create a form online, and I had to do all this stuff. And then the same three people just filled, filled it out. Um, I'm sorry. I'm just being honest. Remember, you didn't hire me to be here to tell you what you need to hear, but some of us, we need to step up. Um, and I know how it is. I know what, how it is right now. The reality is uh, we're in a culture right now where everybody's hiring. I, I understand this. Like nonprofits especially are having difficult time finding volunteers. So I understand that. But we are the body of Christ. Our mission is a little bit more important. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be vain about those other things matter as well. But, but we are the body of Jesus Christ. We are the fullness of him. And if we don't have our act together, we're looking a lot like Conor McGregor there. And this, sorry, that wasn't in the script. Ouch. Sorry. The escape door's over there. It's locked. It's locked. Ah. <laughs> it's chained shut. Here's the thought. Craig, Craig Blomberg says this. Without the diversity that comes from specialization of function, one no longer has an organism, merely one giant organ, 
unable to do anything. Now, here's, here's the truth of the matter. I do not have all the spiritual gifts. Neither does Barry. Neither does Chris. I don't have all the spiritual gifts. You know who has all the spiritual gifts? Jesus. But Jesus isn't walking on this earth. Wait, yeah, he is. How is he walking on this earth? Through you and me. Because we collectively are the body of Christ. And there are gaps in the body of Christ, in this local body of Christ. And we need to know what our role is. Um, We need to um, step up and do it, what God has called us to do. Um, Let me read this again. I thought this was interesting that Paul includes this kind of at the, toward the end of his thoughts. He's talking about like how we're one, we're diverse, all this stuff. And then he just kind of closes it and says like, like just the blatant thing. He says, now you are the body of Christ <laughs> and each of you is a part of it. He, he goes through all this and it's kind of like, well, you, you've been saying this, but he's like, now you are. You're not a spectator. This isn't a consumer thing. This isn't a sit here and, and enjoy the teaching. This isn't a sit back and relax moment. This is your part of this thing that is the body of Christ that's to do good works in this world, that's to point people to Jesus. So we are the fullness of Christ. We are the body of Christ. Each part has its role, so know your role, then step up and do it. Okay, let's go over some next steps. Now, notice I didn't say anything that the church is something that we go to. It isn't something we go to. I don't see in Scripture where people went to church. Is it in there? I don't think it is where it says they they went to church. It says they gathered together. But the church has always been people. And so maybe it's shifting from this consumer mentality here saying um, when, it, when it comes to church, some of us, we've, we've got so stuck in this, and I get, I get this way too, saying, what do I get from this? Is this good enough teaching for me? Do I like the music? Um, I, I've heard people say, it's my turn to, to receive. I give and I give and I give all the time. And when I come to church, I want to receive. This is my time to just bask in, in it or whatever. Like the, uh, we, we say that, or some of us have even said, I've put in my time. <laughs> I've put in my time. It's time for those younger people to step up. Um, we've got to shift from this consumer mentality because we are the body of Christ. We're not, we're not a show. We're people. We're people on mission. Um, our job as a church is merely to equip you to take that next step this week. It's not to, to make you happy. It's to say, here, we're the body. Let's do what God's called us to do. Okay, so the second thing, get involved. Get involved. Now, we have a whole bunch of different ways once a month. I mean, most of the opportunities in our church are once a month things. Very, very, very few because we're super intentional about scheduling things where you don't you aren't on the schedule every week with things. We're super intentional about that. So a lot of the things in our church are once a month kind of things. And, and there's a way that you can get involved. And maybe it's, you just go to this page, um, fayette.church slash next steps. If you, you don't, maybe don't even know what your spiritual gift is that I was talking about. There's an inventory that you can take there. There's, there's ways that you can get involved, um, ways that you can serve. We, I literally spend every week at some point updating the serve form on there to update it with new opportunities and take off the ones that have already been filled and stuff. There's ways that you can get connected by going there. And then the third thought is this, one and a half things. Now, I've shared this a few years back. I said that each person should have one and a half roles in the body of Christ. Now, what does that look like? I don't know. One is the, key, the, the one role is your key role. This is the area that maybe a couple times a month, four times a month, this is the kind of thing that you, you serve the body of Christ and you prepare in at least some way for it. Like it's more than just, I just show up and hand this out. But it's actually, there's a little bit of preparation involved. So that's, that might be the one thing. And then the half thing is maybe saying, okay, this is something that I might do one, monthly, that there's little prep, but I help out in this area like once a month or whatever. That's, that's your half thing. Some of us need to maybe step up and say, I need to do one and a half things. Now that means that some of us who are doing four and a half things need to let go of three things. Um, but that means that some of us doing zero things need to step up. Maybe just saying I'm going to start doing a half a thing. I'm going to do one thing. And then you just step up into this role. 
Now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to, to share um, this awesome message that we are the body of Christ. It's, it's a message that, that the Corinthian church needed to be reminded of, the Ephesians need to be reminded of, that we need to be reminded of today. That you are a God who is alive and you are at work through your people. I pray that you would help us to recognize what our role is to play and that we would step up to do it. Step up and do it, Lord. We want to be a church that, that doesn't just keep busy, but we want to be a church that, that takes bold steps to reach people who are far from Christ and to point them to the good news. I pray that anything I said today um, that wasn't from you, that you would just delete it from our memory and, and that you would speak and, and show us what the one thing that you want us to, uh, to step out and do this week is. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for your attention. I'm going to run out that door and have an awesome week. God bless.